Hey everyone, today we're going to be testing if the 5G signal from your cell phone is going to kill you or not. In order to test this, I finally got my hands on a 5G radiation detector. This is called the GQEMF-390. So I'm going to be testing the strength of radiation that comes from my cell phone, also my Wi-Fi in my house, and also the cell phone towers as well. So I'm going to be driving to some cell phone towers and testing how strong the radiation is at ground level. Let's drive out to a 5G cell phone tower and measure it with my detector here and see how many milliwatts per meter squared we're getting. Okay, so I'm gonna be checking that cell tower here, walking up to it. It actually is detecting cell tower already. So down here on the ground away from it, we're at seven milliwatts per meter squared. So it still says we're in normal range. So even being really close to these cell towers, doesn't seem like it's a big difference. Okay, when I get further away from it, it's actually worse as opposed to right under it. So right under it, it wasn't that high, but out here it's getting up to around 30. So standing right next to the self towers, it wasn't that high. Standing a little bit further back from them, it was a little bit high. Okay, now the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's test how strong the 5G signal is coming directly off of my phone. So comparable to when you're holding it next to your ear talking. So my phone is using my 5G network right now. Let's turn on our meter. So right now we're at around 0.4 milliwatts per meter squared. It's jumping around. Let's bring my phone close to it now. Holy cow, 100, 327 it got to. Okay, that is a lot higher than the cell phone tower. Let's turn off my phone completely. 800 it got to, 818. Whoa. Okay, it turned off. So you know that was coming from my phone right there. It's at 1.6, let's turn on my phone. So it's probably gonna use some signal here as it turns on. So it's always kind of sending out some signals and they don't come in continuous waveform. You can see that they come in little packets on this graph down here. If we look at a different source like my wireless mic here, if I put this next to it, you can see how it's kind of just this constant on the graph there. You can see totally how this signal is coming from it. Look how it changes on the graph when I move it close and further away. But with your phone, the packets get sent out in little signals, so it's more choppy. See when I bring my phone near it, how it's these up and down signals? It's changing really fast the amount of signal that's being sent out. Move my phone away, goes away, move it closer. Let's try making a FaceTime call. Whoa, 1089. So I'm making a FaceTime call to my other phone here, and you can see how high it got, 1,089. Turn it off, it drops right back down. Okay, I have my Google Wi-Fi right here. If I put it right next to Google Wi-Fi, I get in the 600s about. That's as high as it went. So this data is really interesting. The first takeaway from this, you're gonna get way more radiation coming from your phone next to your head than a cell phone tower that's way far away. The reason for this is simply because of the proximity. The cell phone towers put out a lot more power, but they're a lot further away than your cell phone, which is right next to you. But the question is, is it dangerous? The radiation coming from this is non-ionizing radiation, but what it can affect is the molecules in your body. Normal cell phone signals and even your Wi-Fi signal is in the microwave range. So that means it's around the same frequency that your microwave actually uses to cook food. The only difference is your microwave uses a lot more power, and so it can actually heat up the food. So what's all the talk about 5G signals? Well, a 5G signal actually doesn't use electromagnetic waves that are in the microwave wavelength. They're actually in the millimeter wavelength. So they're a little bit shorter, a little bit higher power. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.